Aussteigen! Runter! asked me to collect the car. Well, might as well. The ashtrays are full anyway. But not to worry. I'll be picking up a new car next month. <laughs> How did your luncheon go? Well, I think I blew it. Three to one says you're wrong. No bet. You want a drink? It couldn't hurt. Gas huh? bill. Look, darling. If Charles's group bombs out, you know, I still got a chance to nail those South Africans to something. But don't you worry. We'll put a package together. I know you will, Harry. You always do. But. But, but what? Harry, the house is up for sale. They're going to take the car next week. Oh, I'm afraid they were overly prompt. They already took it. Do we know any bill collectors in West Berlin? Dear Major Morgan, you were a prisoner of war at the camp which I commanded in 1944. I will be in London on Friday and would greatly appreciate a meeting with you to discuss a proposition that could be extremely lucrative. Would you care to join me for drinks at the London Embassy Hotel at 6 p.m.? Yours respectfully. Um, Herr Ernest Furban, please. Your name, please, sir? Morgan, Major Harry Morgan. It was good of you to come, Major. Oh. Well, the war's been over a long time, hasn't it? Why don't you call me Harry? Please, with pleasure. I'm Ernst. How do you know how to find me after all these years? It's my business to locate people. Why don't we go to my room? It's more quiet, yes? Not too heavy on the soda. Okay, now that we've kicked around the good old days, what did you want to talk to me about? 
A great deal of money. Before I commanded the prisoner of war camp, I was attached to the Quartermaster Corps in Berlin. In the August of 1941, I received an order for a heavy truck, two guards, and a driver. The truck was to collect cargo from the Schmargendorf Railroad Guard and go to the Reichspark. The driver was a corporal named Hans Schmidt. Tag, Chef. Tag. Schmidt presented his papers to the railroad official, but before he could start loading the cargo, something unusual occurred. Another convoy appeared on the scene, led by an SS staff officer. Schmidt was given a countermanding order. The SS unit was to take over. Schmidt and his men were replaced by another driver, two guards, and four Polish prisoners of war. Alle raus! They started to unload some very heavy chests from a train in the siding, which, according to Schmidt's information, had recently arrived from the Balkans. Relieved of duty, Schmidt, of course, made for the canteen, which happened to be on the other side of the train. One of the crates was dropped. Schmidt saw the contents. The crates were filled with gold bars, worth perhaps five, six million dollars. Oh, that's an awful lot of sauerkraut. I mean, why did he wait so long a time to tell you about it? When Schmidt was relieved from the convoy detail, he got drunk and was placed in custody, and eventually he was shipped out to the Eastern Front, where the Russians captured him, and he remained in prison until 1955. Why didn't he tell you about the gold then? The next time that I saw Schmidt was uh, only about three months ago. I saw him in the street in Berlin. We had a drink or two together, and he told me the story about the gold bars, along with many other reminiscences. But does he know where the gold is? <laughs> Unfortunately not, but he gave me some information which might help us to find it. During the war, any order which was signed by a general officer could only be countermanded by Hitler himself, or oh, one of the highest-ranking officials, that's to say, Goering, Holtz, Himmler, or Bormann. Schmidt saw the signature on the order. Hitler, Himmler, Goering. They've all been dead for over 25 years, and no one knows where Herr Bormann is. So that leaves Reinhard Holtz. Exactly. It was Holtz's name on the order. And he is going to spend the rest of his life in Siegfried Prison, a prison which is manned by the military of four nations, all of them doing one job, guarding one man. And what do you expect me to do about it? I want you to join forces with me to get Reinhard Holtz out of Siegfried Prison so he can tell us where the gold is hidden. And why me? I remember you as the most resourceful man. Also, funds will be needed. Oh, well, nothing's changed. I mean, if the deal's right, of course, I'm your man. Do you remember William Pryor? Pryor? Oh, yeah. That corporal was in prison with me. What about him? Pryor is now a master sergeant at Siegfried Prison. Oh. And what am I supposed to do? Talk Pryor into letting Holtz out of prison for the night? I mean, how are you planning on getting Holtz out? I mean, Siegfried must be foolproof. Siegfried Prison may be foolproof. But we are not fools, are we? <laughs> <laughs> so we try then. After all, what have we to lose? About 200 years of our lives. And how are you planning on getting Holtz out? Have you got a plan? Uh, no. Mm. Well, 
Well, we need someone to come up with something. Do you know such a person? There may be a guy in Amsterdam. I resign. It's a pleasure to lose to the better man. Would you like another game, Mr. Wells? No, not now. How about tomorrow? Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, we will. Like to see you, Sly. for an old friend? Time? I got all the time in the world. No good, because I got a proposition for you. Yeah, I thought you might. Are you still pushing mutual funds? Come on. Come here. I'm going to steal six million dollars. And I need your help. No way, babe. Mm -hmm. What makes you so sure? Because I'm clean. Half of my life getting thrown in a can, and the other half breaking out. And Good enough. But suppose before you hang up your spikes, I give you a chance to break into the can. I'll tell you what I have in mind. You got a couple of minutes? A couple of minutes? Yeah, sure. Start talking. It's your time. You yeah, haven't lost your touch. You're still a hell of a salesman. You're pitching the wrong sucker, that's all. You, know, you must keep an open mind. <laughs> I love it. I love your style. You are 100% certified cuckoo, you know that? Suppose you bust in and get this guy out. Alive. And then it turns out he doesn't know where the gold is. Then what? Then what? Then you get your name in the Guinness Book of Records the only guy to ever break into a jail. <laughs> It's a nice city, Harry. I'd like it here. Yeah. And all you want to do is sit here and play checkers with a 12-year-old kid who wears wooden shoes. He's 13. And he's the national boys' chess champion of Holland. Big deal. Look, sly baby, what I'm offering you. A chance to own 200,000 dollars. Well, let's put it another way, Berlin. You know something? It's just like Miami this time of year. Last time I was in Miami, I wound up doing one to five. Has this German done any legwork on the prison at all? Uh-huh. Why don't you ask him yourself? Like I said, you're a hell of a salesman. I didn't sell you. You sold yourself on getting back into the action. Is that why I paid for the tickets? Ernst? This is Sly Wells. Sly, Ernst Verben, you two should have a lot in common. Yeah, what's that? Jails. He used to run one. The jazzy car you got. I was fortunate to reclaim it. The man could not keep up the payments.
about right. Just like Miami. Give or take a couple of pop trees. my luggage in the master bedroom, and I want flowers put throughout the suite. Flowers? Yes, flowers, please. Thank you. Sure, it looks like grand so you need such a big place? Do you expect me to stay at the Y? Have you thought of the money it will cost? Money is no object, my dear Ernst. Well, I'd better get going. You see, I'm going to see a man about some money. At that shop down there. What time will you be back? See, about four o'clock. Oh, would you see to a masseur and a manicurist? Have him here at the suite about five o'clock, please, Ernst. Isn't it more important that we talk? No, you want to talk to Sly. He's the one with the ideas. Me, I'm just... I'm just another pretty face. Oh, by the way, could you suggest a really good shirt maker? You wouldn't want me to change my lifestyle, would you? <laughs> Keep thinking. <laughs> centimeters wide and 86 centimeters high. Mm -hmm. And it must be delivered within four weeks. Yeah, yes, that's right. And many thanks. We will see to that immediately, sir. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Good afternoon. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to see Mr. Dahlberg. What is the name, please? Harry? Harry Morgan, is that you? <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, my it's so word. good to see my you. Word. How long has it been? Well, Three years? Four? Give or take, Peter. <laughs> Siggy, this is my old friend, Harry Morgan. Hello. The last time we got together, he beat me for $50,000 with his Hollywood three across. Remember, Peter, Harry? Don't forget about the gin, because I've got a proposition now that's going to make you your money back times ten. We'll talk about it tonight. Siggy. Ask your friend Erica to join us, huh? Peter, okay. I'm a married man. So, you're a married man. <laughs> Where are you staying? I keep a suite at the Schweizerhof. Yes, of course. Peter, I've got to talk to you. There's a lot of money involved. We'll talk about it tonight, huh? Are you in or out, Peter? You're not serious, Harry. You can't be serious about a crazy scheme like that. Talking about at least six million dollars. Of course I'm serious, Peter. And all you have to do is put up the front money. Why don't you put it up, Harry? Well, my cash is tied up in, 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 in desert land. Forget it, Harry. What do you need that for? Have some more wine. Hi, Udo. <laughs> That's Udo Blimperman, a well-known Berlin eater. If he eats here regularly, the place will be famous. Oh, bankrupt. <laughs> All right, Peter, what do you want? My advance money back, plus a commission. Fifteen percent of the total take. With the price of gold going up the way it is, you stand to make a big score. That's why I'm doing it, Harry, as you say, to make a big score. But don't forget, if anything goes wrong, you're on your own. Deal? You are merciless. Oh, there they are. Ah, there are the girls. Hello, Erica. Hello. This is my friend Harry Morgan. How do you do? Hello. I'm sorry to be late. They kept me at the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. Aren't you uh, keeping well? Of course. Why? Well, I don't know. You said the uh, the uh, the hospital. Oh, I work there. I'm a nurse. Really? Yes. Do you handle private capers? I mean cases. This is a celebration. Of course. I want your friend over there. Waiter, the trolley. Not gonna make it. Now hold them. 
way is it done? We're not gonna make it. Oh. Let's get into a chair. Ah, look out! <laughs> Congratulations, Captain Ahab. Oh. You landed Moby Dick, huh? Hi, Sly. Say hello to Erica Kurtz. Erica, hi. And this is my dear friend here, Udo Blimperman. He's a very sweet guy. You'll be crazy about him. Mm -hmm. Looks like he died. Uh, he will be all right. Uh, doctor, how do you know? Um, she's a nurse. Yes. Now, would you like to give me a hand? We'll put him on the couch. One, two, three. Oh! Well, oh. I got it. We can roll oh. across the floor. <laughs> Eric. Udo! What is it? What's wrong with this guy, anyway? Overeating has caused him to collapse. Notice the skin tone and his breathing pattern. Well, what do you think it means? He's addicted to food the way others are to drink or drugs. Uh, you better believe it. I mean, a couple of more feasts, he's headed for that big delicatessen in the sky. Here we go. Blah, blah, blah. And Sly, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Would you kind of take care of him? <laughs> I gotta call my wife, you know, if I don't check in with her every night. She kind of worries about me. Well, what would you suggest we do when he wakes up? Huh? Oh, here. Throw him a banana every half hour. Mm. <laughs> oh, our friend Herr Udo Blimperman. He owns a theatrical costume house. Uniforms? All kinds. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Please, no applause. subject. There we are. Chess, you say? All right, who's winning? Meet the champ. She's been knocking my brains out all night. You've been playing chess all night? How would you like to order some breakfast, please, sir? Blimperman beat us to it. No chance. Oh. He only ordered for himself. You know, the last time I saw Pryor, he went strictly by the book. Time is a great corruptor, like money. Are you sure you know how to handle this car? Come on. Schmidt! I want to introduce you to Mr. Sly Wells. This is Hans Schmidt. Pleased to meet you. How's business? Business is lousy. But this is not my regular job. I'm a nectar. I thought you said he was dependable. We will all have a beer. But I'm just considering an offer from the Schiller Theater. To do what? Make the coffee? <laughs> Come on, Furman. I'm sure that Mr. Schmidt is an accomplished artist. Corporal Pryor. It's Sergeant Pryor. Sergeant? Big deal. It's Master Sergeant Pryor, you dumb son of a bitch. Is that any way to talk to an officer, soldier? Major Morgan. <laughs> How the hell are you? Come on, get in. I'll give you a lift. Get holds out of Siegfried. You must be out of your cotton picking mind. The 82nd Airborne couldn't get him out of there. But we're going to. Cheers. With a little help from our friends. Meaning who? Meaning you, for openers. Have you any idea how that place is run? No. 
So why don't you tell us about it? Scratch! Hit! Hut! Right! Hey! Right shoulder! Hurt! Forward! Hurt! The duty roster operates on eight-hour shifts. Every fourth week, the command rotates from the Americans to the English to the Russians to the French, and then back to the Americans again. And you're in for the next two weeks, right? Yeah. And doing everything by numbers, right? I mean, there's an order covering every move, and nothing moves without an order. You'd better believe it. Holtz has one hour of exercise in the morning, another hour of exercise in the afternoon. And always, somebody's watching him. BFC? Sir. Carry on. Like a complex precision machine, a highly trained and thoroughly drilled body of men designed for only one purpose. Yeah, don't I know it. Only in this case, it's just to keep one guy in prison who wouldn't escape if all the doors were left wide open. In 1,900 hours, Holtz gets his chow. Then maybe after that, he reads for a couple of hours. 2,200 lights out. He may be asleep, but nobody else is. He's watched 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hey, let me ask you one question, Major. Go ahead. Why are we risking our necks to get the old fired out? I, I can make sure you guys can grill him in a cell. Because it won't work. Pryor, what do you think? He's going to spill his guts in three minutes flat? No way. He is quite right. Of course he's quite right. We need more time to open him up. That's why we have to get him out of that prison. Do you realize that Holtz hasn't said anything about his past in over 25 years? Excuse me, gentlemen. May I please go out and wash my hands? Schmidt, sit down. Cross your legs, because I may be about to make you a star. Look, I need some more time to sort out the details, but I'm cooking now. One thing, I'm taking on an assistant. Just a moment, please. What is it, Furbin? This is a military operation. Any plans must first be approved by the commanding officer. Furbin, don't worry. It won't come out of your cut. Ben Sly, pray tell. Who do you have in mind? Just a helping hand. What is that? A public building. It's been empty for years. No kidding. Hey, I want to look inside. Honey, have you got a nail file or a pair of scissors, something sharp and hard? Not a hairpin. Will this be all right? Yeah. Terrific. There we go. How did you do that? Ancient trick of the jeweler's trade. What 
was it before? Ein Gericht, glaube ich. I beg you, of what? A courthouse. Courthouse? Let's see what's upstairs. Erica? Come on. How would you like to go into the interior decorating business? The worst car in our place. How much? What about this nice Mercedes? Why do you want this American car? It's a wreck. Well, you see, I'm very patriotic. About through? Finished. Yeah? Yes. You sure about the dosage? Hmm? For a man his age and body weight? I'm very sure. Okay. I guess that's it. You hungry? If you are. <coughs> the old man's in here. Yeah. I see. All right. Besides military personnel, who sees Holtz on a regular basis? Anybody? Only the doc, uh, Dr. Marr. He comes in every day to make sure he hasn't croaked. <laughs> Dr. Marr, what does he look like? Run him down for us. Good morning, sir. Identification, please. Okay. There's a medic the brass assigned to watch the old man. He comes in at the same time every morning. And... Dr. Marr. Post number one, 0900 hours. Dr. Marr requests permission to enter. Authorization, Allied Joint Command. Standing authorization, 30071EB. Vehicle number, VDK381. Permission granted. Pass the doctor through. should wear this around my neck on a piece of string. You know the army dog, everything by the book? Thanks, doctor. Post number three, zero nine zero seven hours. Dr. Marr, authorization number three, zero zero seven one EB. An acting duty officer, Master Sergeant Pryor. 
Two C prisoner, three daily medical. There's no question about it. The question is, how do we get to him? Furbin. You know anything about him? I've checked. He may have what you would call an Achilles heel. That one. And a telephoto lens. I'm broke. Money. <laughs> The gates, Blimperman. Schmidt. Ah. This is Pauli. Hello. Uh, Hi, sailor. Does he know what he has to do? Oh, no problem. He's a very accomplished artist. I'm sure he is. If you know how to use that, no jokes. Don't forget to say cheese. Do you not think that the doctor takes a good photograph? Very good likeness. Very expressive. What do you expect to gain from this? I will ask the questions, Dr. Ma. Unless you would prefer that the police ask them, it's up to you to choose. How much do you want? Do you think that money can erase your criminal attack on my nephew? What are you talking about? This cheap street boy, he, he propositioned me. Cheap? I will not give you one cent. We don't want your money. We want your cooperation. You will do as I ask. I will send these photographs to the police, to the press, and to the Allied Military Commission. What do you want me to do? Something that will not be unprofitable. Good morning, sir. Identification, please. I have okay. these two officers with me. Good morning, sir. See your identification, please. Thank you, sir. I have these two officers' identifications. Post number one, 0900 hours. Put me through to the OD's office. Yes! Sergeant, listen, I've got the doc here, but he's got this Major. Major C.C. Dunbar, a medic, and a Captain Carter from headquarters, Usura. Who signed the pass? The pass is signed by... Can't make out the signature, some four-star general. Anyway, I don't have any major on my authorized personnel list for today. I have his authorization here in the office. Send him right up. Okay, Sarge, I'll send him on through. Come on, get that finished, will you? I have 
have your special authorization pass, sir. Good. <coughs> Sergeant? Yes, sir? And that authorization is supposed to be signed by the commanding officer of the prison, not by an NCO, Sergeant. I have authorization of the colonel, sir. Oh, where is the colonel? Well, you know how it is, sir. It's a little early for the colonel. I usually handle these things until noon. Sir, I'm sure the sergeant's signature will be all right. Well, I certainly hope so, Corporal. All right, shall we go? Yes, sir. Thank you, Corporal. Sir. Doctor? Eddie, soldier. Identification, please, sir. Why, sir? Why, sir? Corporal, why don't you open the gate? We're in a hurry. Shot. Just relax. It's a B twelve shot, Soldier? Sir? How often do you clean these empty cells? Well, sir, I'm not sure. About twice a week, I guess. You guess. What do you think this army is? A quiz show? Let me show you something. Come here. What do you call that, soldier? Sir? I said, what do you call that soldier? What, sir? That is called dirt. And dirt breeds germs. Now clean it. It's not mine. I mean, I'm not on the cleanup Just trail, sir. Clean it, and I'll see that it does not go on a report. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. What the hell? What is that? Butts! Cigarette butts! Uh, Sergeant, the prisoner needs dental treatment. Now, Dr. Ma has relieved the infection, but the prisoner is not to leave his cell or have any chow until the dentist arrives tomorrow morning. Understood? Right, sir. <laughs> your name on my list. The Major's on my list. And what the hell does that mean, Sergeant? I, 
I don't understand, sir. Well, let me spell it out for you, Sergeant. Being on your list is not good enough. Why is it on the master duty log? I'm sorry, sir. I must have forgot to put it on the Master log. Sergeant, I'd have bust your ass down to PFC. This is a maximum security prison, and everything should go through a chain of command. Yes, sir. I wouldn't care if it's the CC of Europe, the President of the United States, or the Pope. Nobody, but nobody gets inside or outside of this prison without being on the master duty line. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'll stay in it. Take one officer's talking to you. I'm going to spell it out for you, Sergeant. Tomorrow I'm bringing in Dr. Wiener, a dental surgeon. Just make sure that Dr. Wiener's name is on that master duty log. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now open that damn gate and let me out of here. Corporal, open up. Doc, uh, I'm thinking of buying one of these. Four hours. You gotta get him back here in 24 hours. I'm taking a hell of a big chance, you know. You're getting paid a lot of money to take a big chance, Sergeant. All right, sir. See you tomorrow, Doc. I hope to Christ. How long before that juice wears off? We've got another 20 minutes, not a second more. How much longer is it going to be? Another 12 minutes? Going to be cutting it kind of thin. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You got five minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks for the memories, baby. Huh? 
Holtz! Mein Führer! Holtz! You have betrayed me! I... No, mein Führer. Never! Come here! Betrayed me? Betrayed the fatherland? But how? We don't shout at the Führer. You've stolen funds that were the property of the state. You receive helps. And I trusted you. But please, my Führer, if you only would tell me what you mean. I'm so confused. Where's the gold? Gold? What gold? You. One of the most trusted members of the party. <laughs> what is happening? I, I do not understand. What do you mean? You do not understand. <laughs> oh. I must swear you to secrecy. Shh. No one must ever know. Huh? Talking, Schmidt. Holtz! I want to know where the gold is. Gold? What gold? That gold that was to be delivered to the Reichsbank from Schmargendorf. That was so many years ago. Are you insane? That gold shipment disappeared seven days ago. You signed the order. Where's the gold? Where have you hidden the gold, Holtz? I cannot think. I. I beg you to excuse me, my Führer. My head. I cannot think. Well, my Führer, if you will permit him a few moments to collect his thoughts. Very well. Take him out into the other room. Remember, didn't we lose the war? Haven't I been in prison? No, you have been in the hospital. <laughs> we are winning the war, but we haven't time for that now. You must tell the Führer where the money is buried. Money? What money? The gold bars from the Balkans. You signed the order for the convoy. Was it gold? Yes. Yes. Himmler said. What did he say? He said. Göring was going to take it. He said. I should hide it for the Reich. Where did you hide it? This is for his ears only. Stay there. something to tell you. Right. It's buried at a summer house in Vandlitz. In the air raid shelter by the house. We don't smoke. Schmidt, baby, you are beautiful. You're a sensational Adolf. Ah, thank you. Sensational. Now, why don't we do a double act, and I'll play Mussolini. Sing and dance, no? Oh, the Führer loved to dance. Oh. Stop that dancing. And take off that ridiculous mustache. Ridiculous? 
The Fuhrer's mustache was nothing like that. Off! Will you relax? Tomorrow morning we put Holtz back and then we go for the gold. Hey, what the hell are you talking about? We leave tonight, after it gets dark. What's your hurry? It's been there over 30 years, if it's still there at all. I agree with Reynolds. It doesn't make any sense, man. Uh, six million big ones, baby, that makes sense, right? And we got at least 14 hours before we got to get Holtz back for his medical check, right? So what are we waiting for, all that loot? Can you get pictures of Holtz's summer villa? Yes, I think I have one among my souvenirs. But there's just one small point. And what's that? Holtz's villa is in Wandlitz. So? Wandlitz is in the east. Oh. Well, Furbin, you finally made it. You're a two-star general. How does it feel? I would have been a general if we had won the war. <laughs> Schmidt, you want to get the door? Yeah. Harry, I would uh, feel a whole hell of a lot better if we were carrying some artillery in there. Oh. You know, Allied officers may be welcome at East Berlin, but their artillery is not. Strictly verboten. Come on, let's go. gold, I'll buy myself a theater. I always wanted a theater of my own. Very touchy. Oh, the Romanische Café was over there. All the actors and writers and painters would have a coffee and watch the most beautiful girls in Europe walk by. Every night was like New Year's Eve. We thought the nights would never end, that they would last for a thousand years. Perhaps that was our problem. Quiet, Schmidt. Quiet. Oh, please. I'm afraid. I don't want to go into the East. Take it easy, Schmidt. Oh, that'll put me back into camp. For a few hours of your miserable life, you will have to sweat so that you can have the will to spend the rest of your life in luxury. Pull yourself together, Schmidt. Be a man. Don't you dare. You tell me to be a man? What are you, a general? Huh? You're not even a colonel anymore. You're nothing. A lousy bookkeeper. A man who sniffs after people who owe money on their washing machines. That's what you are. Good, Schmidt. So long as he can be angry, he will not be nervous. Coming, Sarge. Good evening, sir. Thank you.
What's the matter? The air raid shelter was to the left of the building. We've had it. Look what they've put on top of the gold. We came all this way for nothing. Shut up! Well, might as well go take a look at it anyway, huh? This air raid shelter must have been uh, not less than three meters, which is exactly the height of this ceiling. That means that there remains one meter of concrete still below our feet, three feet, four inches. It is here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean the shelter is still down there? Why not? <laughs> mm. How do we get through that? Well, there's only one way. And that's to blast it. Blast it? Yeah. But the noise. We will have all the East German police and the Russians after us. No, no, not after us. With us. You know any high-ranking officials on this side of the line? Well, there is um, Wilhelm Schlager. He used to be a good friend of mine before he defected to the East. Good party member? I'm sure he is. You know, every man has his price. Quick. Fulben, you are an American officer? Temporarily. I will explain later. Can we come in, please? Yes, this way. Telephone call did not disturb your family. I am alone. Frida passed away last year. Oh, I'm sorry. But you have not introduced me to your friends. Oh, uh, this is uh, Mr. Jones. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, Mr. Jones, and uh, Mr. Brown. Of course. Now, what do you want? I think, as uh, old uh, comrades in arms, we should speak in private. Uh, the study, perhaps? This way. Thank you. What happened? Well, I briefly told him of our need for his cooperation. And? After some negotiations, he has agreed to help us. What, what negotiations? His share. Yeah, terrific. No, I finally got him down to one-eighth of the proceeds. And what is he going to do for that? One-eighth? I don't mind. He is going to arrange for assistance. He said it would not take him too long.
Everything all right, Schlager? Of course. Would you have some wine while we are waiting? Uh, with pleasure. Danke. Good. Now we can get started. I hope I haven't kept you gentlemen waiting. Oh, gee, John, yeah. Do you have any ideas? My men are surrounding the building. Like a glass of wine, Colonel Kosnikov. Schlager has told me your plan. Oh, I'm sure he has. I suggest you show me the building. Gentlemen, if you please. Hey, look, Colonel, none of us are heroes. And none of us are looking for trouble. I didn't think you were. I do not think I should come with you, Colonel. Neither do I. Do not waste your time with him, Captain. I assure you, he is quite dead. I think perhaps I will have that glass of wine after all. Schlager was a fool and a bad businessman. I want one-sixth for my share. You got it. Attention, attention. This is an emergency. There is an unexploded bomb in the cellars of Biedenstrasse 42. All residents will evacuate the premises immediately. This is an emergency. Evacuate the premises immediately. Attention! Attention! All residents of Wiedelstrasse 42 will evacuate the premises immediately. I repeat, evacuate the premises immediately. <laughs> The building is clear, sir. Sir, the building is cleared of all civilians and military personnel. Good. Send in the bomb disposal detail. Command to bomb disposal detail. You may go in now. The building is cleared of all civilians and military personnel. Bomb disposal detail to command. Your message received. We will go in now.
Quite empty. He must be somewhere in the crowd. But I looked for him everywhere. I told you the building's quite empty. Get him out of here. Bomb detail to command, Cobb. The situation is still dangerous. We have found a second bomb. Go on. Get the ladder and the tools in the other room. Yes. found a child in the building and reported the second bomb. Then clear all the troops in the danger area immediately. Surround me with it, and let's take a group shot. 
My compliments on your efficiency, gentlemen. Now put all of the gold into my car. Uh, what's the matter, Colonel? Wasn't one sixth enough? But of course not. Then what happens now? That should be obvious. You are a team of political assassins. You crossed the checkpoint in a stolen Allied car using forged papers. You murdered an official of the German Democratic Republic. And then you died. Died of what? Broken hearts? Of wounds received while attempting to escape. Please, Colonel, you can't do that to us. We don't want the rotten gold. We don't want it. You can have it. You can keep it all. Just yes, no, no, please. Please, Colonel. No, 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 no. 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 Get it. Let's go. I'll move the Russian's car. Give me a hand. Come on, Harry. My director. I shall have a debt collecting company of my own. We are coming up to the checkpoint. Holy God. Hang on. What the hell are you doing? The head count. We were four coming across. One body short. should stop smoking anyway. The Surgeon General has maintained that it's hazardous to your health. Sergeant, what's the problem? Excuse me, sir, but your flags are on reverse. Huh. 
Some kid must have switched him. I'll fix him, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. What do we do with his share? Well, you can't take it with you, can you? No. take you to convert bullion into cash. Two, three days? Yes. Your partners. Shall we get on with it? Let's get it inside. I'll be back later. We'll play some gin. The usual? Are you kidding? In today's market? Let's see. A hundred dollars a point. Hollywood three across. Time, Ernst. Another 15 minutes, we shall be at the gates. Uh, what do we do now? Swim across? Keep an eye on your boy. to move this mess. Oh, not too long, perhaps five minutes. Once the tow truck gets through. And when's that gonna happen? In about one hour. An hour? Yeah. Thanks. Now listen. Out of your mind? Hang on to your hats.
could have killed us! Of course. Take it away. He can't have anything to eat till after he sees this dentist is coming. Go on, take it away. Post number one, 0900 hours. Dr. Mar Major Dunbar, Captain Carter, and Dr. R. H. Weiner, dental surgeon, request permission to enter. We're in a hurry. This is Dr. Wiener over here. We'll just be a moment, Captain. <laughs> yes, sir. Sergeant Pryor, what's going on here? Sir, this is Major Dunbar, medical officer from you, sir. What are you doing here, Major? Who's this man with Dr. Marr? The man with Dr. Marr, sir, is Dr. Weiner, a dental surgeon. You see, the general was chewed out by the Russians at the last Four Power Conference. But what about? Well, the prisoner complained about his medical treatment. Now, just what the hell is that supposed to mean? It means, sir, that his teeth hurt. Don't you get sarcastic with me, Major. If there's any complaints about the treatment in this prison, they come to me. This month, I run this prison. Not the Russians, not the general, and not you, Major. Now, I don't like people trying to go over my head, so let's have it. Just what is this prisoner's complaint? His teeth hurt, sir. And what the hell am I supposed to do about it? Pull them out myself? No, sir. Dr. Weiner will. Right, Major. Now, you are acting like a smart ass. I asked you a question. And I answered it, sir. And I'm going to go back to headquarters. And I'm going to make out my report. And in my report, sir, I will state that aside from a total violation of military protocol, that I was refused permission to treat the prisoner, sir. Now, just a goddamn minute here, Major. No one's refused you anything. Sergeant, uh, the escort Major Dunbar and the doctors to the prisoner's cell. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Major Dunbar, I'm going to remember you. Sir. I can guarantee it. Goddamn troublemaker. Get out of here. So, Dr. Ma, you say that he's bleeding from the guns. Thank you. on the prisoner's condition, Doctor. As well as can be expected. I will submit my dental report tomorrow. Then we're ready to go. You'll be coming two and three minutes. Medical detail wants our control.
That's good for a pain in the ass, Doc. I'll make believe I didn't hear that, soldier. Sir. Close that gate. Yes, sir. Dunbar. One minute, Major. You can't leave, sir. Your pass, sir. You dropped it. See you later, Sergeant. Wouldn't miss it for the world. See you tomorrow, Doc. Sarge? Prisoner's flipped out. He thinks he saw Hitler. Oh, yeah? Oh, shit. Now, tell me, Fervent, deep down, were you ever a Nazi? Not necessarily. <laughs> you know, we gotta dump this car somewhere. Ha, 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 ha.